In this video, we create a new instance. The software has been installed. An instance is needed for the data to be extracted from CA7 and delivered to AAI. This is the basic role of the integration. We'll configure the instance in another video. In this video, we explore the A option for add. The end results will be an empty shell with basic settings. The CA7 instance ID, the AI instance ID, and a color theme. We'll show the items added to ZOS and USS. Additional elements will be added to Custlib and we'll explain what they do. Finally, we'll show how to start the instance. The process is fairly simple, but it has multiple parts that we explain. Let's create our first instance. We see the four options, A, C, U, and M, which match the four options we outlined in the overview. We use option A for add. We select any of the available slots. It should be clear that when starting the IMS for the first time, no instance is defined. The IMS will automatically start the add instance function to define the first instance. The A add option is therefore only used when defining more instances within the same IMS. We're now in the first screen of the add option. Here we enter the baseline settings of our instance, but we're not configuring yet, that comes next. You have to reference the CA7 instance ID. It should be consistent with the way instances are defined in the CA system. They should be sourced from the SVC no statement in the CA7 init deck. Use XTM name if it's defined, otherwise use R name. If neither is defined, then use the CA7 equal value. The software populates the L part automatically in its reserve field, although we'll be able to customize this later. Then we add the AAI system ID. Assuming you have experience installing AAI on a Unix or Windows system, you'll remember this three character ID in the wizards. We enter it here. Both IDs are important. They're going to define the naming convention of the instance members, so it's important to get them right. We can change the menu slots. We name our instance, and this is your decision, although we recommend establishing a naming convention early so as to maintain consistency throughout the system. We then have the option of setting a color theme to our environment for the instance name, the LPAR, and so forth. We press Enter to continue. In the next screen, we allocate the instance data sets. They require an HLQ. The default option lets you enter a high-level HLQ and the software appends the rest. The override HLQ option allows us to use non-standard format HLQ. The reason we emphasize the importance of the CA7 and AI instance IDs is this. When the instance's data sets are created in ZOS, the default naming convention of the HLQ uses the following. First, a fixed value, AIS7 dot then the AI instance ID, then the last character of the CA7 instance ID, the LPAR dot, and finally the dataset name. AI server ID name and CA7 instance ID are the data points we entered in the previous screen. Then we have the ZOS system settings, management class, storage class, data class, volume serial, and so forth. We have to set the name of the ZFS volume that will host the data files prior to transmission to AI. Use override DSN to define an alternative name if site standards require vSAM cluster specific HLQ. If you leave it blank, the default ZFS volume name is shown in yellow. If you override, you specify DNS and space. We also allocate the space based on the size of the CA7 system and volume of data we're expecting to acquire. We press enter to continue. The data sets are created. This is reflected in ZOS. We now have these new data sets. Let's describe the important ones. SRVR SCFG stores instance configurations, as in the information pertaining to the instance. Since we haven't configured, it's currently empty. SRVR SREC stores requests issued from the ISPF IMS system, or the request STC. The requests are four character codes, say term or ADEF. SRVR SREC also contains the state of the primary STC, say active, shut down, or busy. This makes it possible for the IMS system and the request STC to know whether they can issue requests to the server STC in the first place. SRVR CKPT is the checkpoint. It stores a date and timestamp of the last event data sends. Following a warm start, it can recover all the data since the checkpoint date and time and up to the current date and time to make sure nothing is missing. The Custlib library has been appended with items dedicated to the management of the instance. 
a control member called AIS-7 IMCF, which has specific information about each instance, a JCL named AI-7S, followed by four characters describing the AAI and CA-7 instances, which starts the server STC, and AI-7R, which starts the request STC. Let's take a minute to talk about the startup procedure. Up until this point, we've been discussing the server STC, the information sourced in ZOS, and the processes that run in USS. The instance start procedure uses elements from both. This is an LPAR with two CA7 instances. They each have an ID, CA71 and CA72. We have two software instances and two AAI servers, each with an ID as well, 123 and XYZ. We've already described what these IDs are. When a software instance is installed, new JCLs are added to CUSLib for the management of that instance. AI7S, which is the server STC, and AI7R, which is the request STC, whose purpose is to submit commands to SRVR SREC, followed by four characters. Their naming is automated. The instance procedure is a JCL called AI7S, followed by four characters, the three AI instance ID, and the last character of the CA7 ID. As a result, the first JCL is called AI7S1231, while the second AI7S XYZ2. To start the instance, we simply execute this JCL. It invokes BPX batch and starts the USS environments. It also passes a Unix executable, AIS7 SRVR, which is the server STC code. The instance starts. This is the CUSLib member where the execution JCL can be found. It must be copied to a system procedure library. This is the default generated name for the server STC based on the instance code XXXY, which you would specify to automation so it starts automatically. The important section is this statement. It describes the execution of the PGM BPX batch, invoking the AIS7 SRVR execution module passed as a parameter.